This is coming from U.S. Energy uh, Information Administration. So this is not like something that's from a blog. It's the U.S. Department of Energy, okay? So nuclear 92.5, geothermal is 74.3, natural gas around 57%, hydropower 42, coal 40, wind 35, solar 24.9, yet that's all we keep hearing about. If you go to the next one, uh, the CO2 emissions, you, you should have, uh, uh, yeah, that one right there if you could. Uh, um, there you go. And then the last one will be great. Uh, zoom in a little bit so we can see it all. CO2 emissions avoided by the U.S. power industry. Again, nuclear, uh, and that's by million metric tons, 476, 187, 174, 45, and geothermal. Uh, it, 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 Bjorn, can you explain this chart right there? Go back to the one you were on. No, just go on the one that we were on. Explain this chart. What does this mean to the average person? So, well, I'm not sure it means anything to the average person, but let's take a step back and say, if you have more nuclear power, you use less of everything else. Now, you use a little bit less of wind and solar, but you also use less of fossil fuels, and it means you end up emitting less CO2. Nuclear simply replaces CO2-emitting energy. So that's why nuclear has saved more uh, CO2 than any other technology. Uh, if you have more wind, if you have more uh, hydro, you also save CO2, but much less. And what you have to remember is it's really hard to keep a society running with wind and solar because, you know, they predictably will run out. You know, at night there's no solar. When the wind dies down, there's no wind. Uh, and we have no sense of how little batteries we have. Right now, the world has batteries uh, to, to cover enough electricity consumption in the world uh, for one minute and 15 seconds. Uh, so, you know, fundamentally, batteries are not in any time soon going to be able to step in on this. So whenever you use solar or you use wind, you inevitably have to have some backup power that both has greater cost and that also means typically gas. So unless you're very uh, fort fortuitously positioned where you have lots of hydro as backup, you will emit more CO2. Uh, so nuclear is the only large-scale way that we can cut a large part of our CO2 emissions from electricity. Tom, what are you noticing in private equity, what direction money is going to with nuclear? Are you seeing like a trend there? Yeah, you're, you're seeing, if you take a look at, at, at the minds of private equity and in um, venture capital, you, you have people like Bill Gurley and others like him that are pointing out that um, investment in, you know, Gen 4 nuclear is not only uh, uh, important, but it's critical because Gen 3 nuclear has proven to be safe. As a matter of fact, you look around France, France has got a ton of nuclear, and it's not old nukes, right? It's it's relatively new. Um, and so that, that's how they're being powered. But they're looking at it as investment opportunities. And you're not seeing... You're, you're, you're not seeing a bunch of investment in like the next 2% more efficient solar panel. Um, and you're seeing full recognition that it's that, oh, we could just get lithium from seawater. And, I said, and then you take a look at the energy it takes to get the, then the other resources it takes to get the lithium out of the seawater. But you're seeing tremendous interest in investments in, in, in new nuclear power. And more importantly, evangelists saying, will you please read the reports? And I'm seeing VCs, they'll tweet it, they'll connect to a report and say, will you just read this? Will you just read this? And they're trying to push, you know, rather than just yelling or making documentaries that are fake, they're trying to get people to read the facts such as we're right here. And so they're smart people are out on the forefront, but they're being drowned out by the political people. Follow up on the nuclear thing. We were talking about this off camera before we started. Nuclear is one of those words where, I mean, it's just, the, you say the word nuclear, Bad people word. are like, have a nuclear meltdown. Like you, that's a that's a taboo word. You hear that. I mean, we all know what happened in World War II in uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and then there's been disasters. We were talking about the Three Mile Island that they kind of covered up. In, and Chernobyl. And Chernobyl, and uh, was it Nagasaki or Fukushima? Anyway, all these situations, you hear nuclear, mm -hmm. people get freaked out. Is it what should we not be fearful of when it comes to nuclear? So uh, if you actually look at how dangerous different things are, uh, given how much kilowatt hours they produce or how much energy they produce, uh, it turns out that nuclear is one of the safest things ever. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit like with uh, airplane crashes. Uh, actually, it's incredibly safe to fly. 
But every time there is a crash, you yeah. hear about it. Great and analogy. So, so it's it's a, a little bit the same way with, you know, Chernobyl obviously was a terrible disaster. Uh, but, you know, uh, 10 years later, the EU, the World Health Organization, the International uh, Nuclear Commission, and several other organizations went together and said, well, how many people actually died from this? And they find that it's much less than 2,000 people. You know, remember... This is in a world where coal fire power, which emits lots and lots of air pollution, will routinely kill about half a million people every year. But it happens all the time, and it's not one single disaster. What, so what, what kills half a million people every so, year? So uh, the air pollution from coal fire power. Uh, so it's basically the fact that you know, you've cleaned up much of this in the U.S., but most places you just belch out this black smoke, uh, especially in poor countries, mm -hmm. and it simply blankets the uh, neighborhoods with, uh, with or, dirty air. Or if West you, Virginia. <laughs> I don't know about that. But if you go to New Delhi, for instance, it's terrible, literally terrible. You know, it's like smoking a pack of cigarettes or something a day. Uh, now, that's also because they burn a lot of their agricultural waste. And, you know, it's not just the coal-fired power plants. But we know that coal-fired power plants make mm. a huge impact. Uh, and, and the point is, there's a lot of deaths from a lot of different technologies. So hydropower very clearly also leads to big breakdowns of you know dams, that kind of thing. Uh, and you know even even wind power and solar power, mm -hmm. you, you know people will uh, uh, drop down from the uh, from the rooftops where they're installing them, or down from the from the uh, uh, wind turbines. They're not nearly as dangerous, so you know they're still pretty good. So are you advocating for more use of nuclear? I'm simply saying nuclear is incredibly safe yeah. and we should recognize that just like you actually reckon most people recognize airplanes are incredibly safe. Yeah. Although that's not I think that's think important distinction it. because you know these yeah. days you hear what's going on in Ukraine Putin drops a nuclear threat every single day. Obviously there's a two you know different examples but just the the yeah. word nuclear the word. people yeah. like you know exactly. the hair raises on their skin right there. It's yes. it's alarming. Yes. Yes, and and just because you share a word, you shouldn't think that that's the but same. But it's thing. the same word, uh, ex so exactly, exactly. <laughs> but, but kind of hard to and, distinguish the two. So, and, so and this is also why fourth generation <laughs> nuclear power, because remember, third generation actually had to be actively protected. So, on, you know, if you lose all power, that was what both had in Fukushima and in, in Chernobyl. If you lose all power, basically, you can get a real meltdown. What they're saying is that the new uh, uh, fourth generation nuclear is passively safe. That is, if you lose all power, it just stops, which of course is a better setup. There's a lot of technological reasons why we didn't do it for the third one, because you'd be like, well, shouldn't we have done that already? But you know, so the, the point here is it's potentially much safer, it's potentially much cheaper, but again, I wanna see that uh, before we, we say, yay, let's go. So if you like this clip and you wanna watch another one, click right here, and if you wanna watch the entire podcast, click right here.